Uh, welcome everybody to the session Apache Finrac, the FinTech core banking application. It's my honor and pleasure to get to give Javier a break for a moment in being MC in introducing speakers. So thank you to Javier for the great job he's done in organizing the Finrac track. But I've had you know the honor of working together with Javier first as a part of the Mifos community and now as a part of the Finrac community for a number of years. I was trying to recount how many different you know, places or continents we've been together face to face in person. I think it's three or four right yeah. now. So it's good to be four, working together yeah. on this virtual event. But Javier, you know, he's a very visionary thinker. He's put in place a lot of great, you know, ideas and foresight into helping grow the community, especially in Latin America. So really looking forward to seeing the wisdom he has to impart in us right now as he talks about the tremendous adoption amongst fintechs around Finteract as a core banking platform and application to scale their efforts. So I'll pass it over to Javier and I'm looking forward to this talk. So thank you, Javier. You're welcome. Thank you, Ed. Thank you for your time. So Apache Finract, the core application uh, of the, the, the FinTech core application, as we say. Uh, let me, so a little bit about me. Uh, I've been involved in fintech since 2009. Uh, I've been involved in open source since 2014. Uh, and um, been with Mifos initiative and then with the Apache Finerac initiative. So um, I'm also the CEO, uh, co-founder of Fitter. We are an open source company. We focus in, in financial institutions, in our mission is to accelerate the adoption of the best financial institutions in the world to open source. I'm the father of one in a family of five. So why, why open source matters? And this is something that um, it's important. So open source matters because there is a standardization. We have uh, the, the, the previous talk with, with the guys of Move. Uh, we talk about the lack of standardization in the financial industry. And, and standardization is important because when we are talking about money, when we are talking about financial services, we are talking about connecting people. Connecting people, and, and not only with the money, connecting people with the capabilities of, of what they can do. Transaction and payments are the way of how we um, process our capabilities and our um, and, and our work and how we make our go work available and our talent available to other people. So that's why it's important that financial institutions and the financial services are accessible and are really interconnected. I don't know if you are seeing me well or I'm being a little bit uh, uh, with, with interactions, but Ed, you can let me know if there is any technical issue. Yeah, no, we can see you and the slides are moving along fine, Javier. Okay, great. So um, the, the other the other point of why the open source matter is that um, there are low barriers to collaborate. I, I remember one of our first um, users of, of Mifos by the day in, in Latin America, a big bank in Mexico, they were using SAP as a core banking application. And one of the, the things that they were saying is that SAP it was very, very, uh, um, everything on SAP was coded, was, you, you cannot access a, a, any table because it, it has a code. You just need to go to another reference from another reference to a book, to say what, what this table is good for. And then you say in, in, in Mifos, in Apache Finerac, you have the, the loans table was called loan, the client table was called client and, and, and so on. Very straightforward for collaboration. So that it's important because in every open source community, in our open source community, we want to people to be able to contribute fast and be able to be up, up, up to speed as fast as they can do. So you want, and we want, and we are doing the efforts to do it. And if we have, and of course, we have room for improvement. But what we want to do is that everybody can contribute back to the community. 
And when and in order to do that, things need to be straightforward. So the barriers for taking the, the code and, and using it are low. So because they are designed to do that, we want everybody to be able to use the code and, 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 and take the advantage of that. The, the, the other open source then advantage is that there's no vendor locking. You are not uh, you are not in, interacting with the owner of, of the source code. You are interacting with a community. So in and in, in the community, there are many vendors. There are many people that are contributing. So maybe you will need help from a company to integrate, to, to use, but you are not locked to that vendor because in the community, you have many options. The, the other advantage and, and open source is that always community outperforms individuals. And, and whether these individuals are, in, are human beings or corporations, always communities are more powerful than individuals. A community of companies and individuals is powerful than a, a single company, no matter as big as that company. And, and we are seeing this because many of the big tech companies or all of the big companies in technology are heavy contributors of open source. So open source, it's really uh, the, the way of how software is going to be created and become standardized in the next decade or more. Another advantage of, of open source and why open source matters is that you don't re you, you can retain the IP of the things that you are developing. Uh, any new development that you are going to do, you can decide to contribute it back of the, to the community or you can retain your IP. And, and that is important because fintechs are always startups and, and startups are wanting to, to become valuable and that valuation, it's, it's depending on, 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 on the things that they create and the IP that they have. So the ability to retain your IP on the things that you develop, on, the, on your secret sauce, uh, and things that you're not going to contribute back, but your secret sauce that you want to retain for yourself, <clears throat> that is why open source matters. If you're going to use a proprietary system, uh, everything that you build for the proprietary system, it's not yours. It's from the vendor. And of course, the last but not least is that in open source, you don't have license cost. You don't have any recurrence license cost. That's why open source matters. So which fintechs are using Finirat? And, and, and this is something that we are being in the, in the, in the, in the months and the last year, from the last year to this year, New, new fintechs are adopting Finiract uh, as, as their core banking application. I, I don't see if the... Yeah, you're still on the previous slide, Javier. Yeah, let me stop for a second. There you go. So we have fintechs in the DeFi, decentralized finance, that are using Finiract. So for decentralized finance, you have uh, loans, you have accounts, you have a, a user management that needs Finiract capabilities. We have banking as a service. Banking as a service, it's the new big deal. So you want, you are a FinTech, but you don't have the license to do whatever you want to do. So you, have, you apply for the services of other FinTech or other bank that gives you the capabilities of, of issuing financial instruments and an and, and open banking or as I call uh, regulatory regulation as a service or regulation services as a service, it's the new thing and, and it's growing a, a lot. And many, and, and we are seeing that many of those are using Finerac and can use Finerac as part of their, of their core banking application. Of course, online lenders are using Finiract. Of course, new banks can use Finiract. Of course, um, e-wallet and crypto exchange. Uh, some of the new crypto exchange, and, and we are seeing that are, are using Finiract for their uh, many of the capabilities that we are going to, to, to see now in the future. Uh, sorry for that.
So what are fintechs are looking for in, in Finerat? Um, first of foremost, they are looking for functionalities. Functionalities like wallets or accounts. So everything in the financial system, in the financial industry, you need an account. If you are going to store uh, value, if you're going to store assets, uh, US dollars, Neiras, or Kenyan shillings, you need an account. And if you're going to be a fintech, you probably will need to open an account for your, for, for your clients, for your customers. So the functionality of accounts in Finrac, it's very useful for any fintech. So you can have, as you know, multiple type of accounts with multiple currencies in Finrac that can be used for different fintechs to, 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 be, uh, to, to, to be part of their technology. The loan management system. I think that the loan management system in Finerac is one of the most uh, powerful uh, functionalities that Finerac has. Multiple loan capabilities that you can achieve on Finerac. Not only individual loans, group loans, mortgage loans, asset loans, just you name it. Like you have a, a, a big granularity when you are talking about loans within Finerac. All the things that you can achieve with the, with with out of the box functionalities in Finerac for a lending company, it's incredible and it's free. It's there for you to use and and start from that, and you you can then uh, use the, the 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 rest of the of the of, of your resources, not for building from scratch, but for improving on the edge. KYC, KYC it's also fundamental for many of the of the fintechs. So knowing your customer on and everything that is related to KYC can be achieved with Finera and the and the and the uh, and the capabilities for uh, sorry for that and the capabilities that Finera has for storing and, and telling the story of, of a user, of, of your client, from pictures to signatures to any document that you can upload to plugins that you can use for videos and, 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 and anything that is needed there. Investment accounts, term and uh, term deposits and other. So th that's something that is also interesting in Finerac that you can achieve with, with the, with the Finerac capabilities. So investment companies and that are using Finerac for managing the investment portfolio of their customers or managing each particular investment of each client that, that they have using Finerac. It's another of the functionalities that fintechs are looking into Finerac. So building a set of complete functionalities on top of Finerac is what made Finerac so attractive for fintechs. And it's how, it's, and it's why fintechs are looking at Finerac as, as their core banking application to deliver and to expand all the systems that they're using. Also what, what fintechs are looking into Finerac as is the architecture. First and foremost, APIs. The, the, the novel architecture and the, the visionary architecture of Finerac that it's everything is API, everything is on, a, on top of an, of an API, allows fintechs to create services and to connect with multiple front ends, with multiple services, not only with channels to the client, but also with with service providers, with banks, with, uh, with uh, credit bureaus, with services of KYC and, and, and you name it. So the open API, the, the, the open API movement that it's creating banks and financial institutions moving through the, 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 the store of value, moving from a, a place where you went with your money and put it in a safe, place towards making the financial and the fintechs more like a hub, more like a, a switch when you can connect your, 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 your resources with the world. 
I want my resources, I want to be able to, to transact with the entire planet seamlessly and, 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 and not as expensive as, as, as it is today when making a swift transfer from a bank to another bank takes days and it costs a lot of money. <clears throat> we have options now that can allow us that, that allowed us to, to move money through blockchains or, or through other fintechs that are making this faster and cheaper. And, 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 and the, the ability of connecting fintechs to those services is what make uh, Finerac so attractive for these fintechs. The openness, the ability to, to just to see what is inside, just to be able to collaborate, to change, to modify everything that is it, it is on the Finerac uh, platform also is what makes Finerac very attractive for, for fintechs in the world. Um, and of course, the robustness, um, making a platform and, 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 and ensuring and, 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 and seeing that the Finerac platform, it's a robust platform that it's been used by thousands of financial institutions and fintechs around the world and that there is a community that is working on top of that and that's community it's active and we are contributing every day every month every release we have new code new things makes our message most more powerful and makes others to come back and to contribute and to want to be part of this history uh, the high volume of transaction is something that is necessary and, and it's going to, it's achievable. And, and we've seen in this conference ways to achieve that. And hopefully those, are, those things are going to be contributed back to the community. <clears throat> so what, which fintechs are using accounts, savings and wallet functionality? Okay, well, we see new banks using uh, these functionalities. Uh, of course, if you are building a new bank or a digital bank, new banks and digital banks are banks that are created from scratch. And typically they don't have um, brick and mortar uh, uh, buildings. They don't have um, uh, branches. There's no way you can go to the bank. It's actually the bank it's at the palm of your hand. So you have an app, that's your bank. And that's the bank that we all want to have. I just every time I need to go to my bank to do something, it's a pain. I don't want to go to the bank. I want to have my bank into my cell phone. And that's what the neo banks are doing. <clears throat> and we are seeing a lot of neo banks that are being built on top of Finerac. And this is awesome because the, the, the bank of the future, the, the next generation of, of banks that are the, the apps, the banks that are just an app. And now I'm not, I'm not saying just an app in a bad way. I'm saying just an app <clears throat> in the way that it, it, is, it is meant to be, just an app. And, and those banks are, are using the account facility and, 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 and actually they are using most of the functionalities of Finerac because uh, Finerac is built for them. E-wallets. So e-wallets are the, the, the just a, a part of the of banking services. You have an account and you need to be able to transact. So using the Finerac capabilities of the wallets, of the accounts, of the multiple accounts that you can have <clears throat> accounts in multiple currencies. You can have accounts in with you have many accounts for a, for each user. Those functionalities are really appreciated for the wallets providers, and those are those wallets providers are using Finerac as their core banking application. Exchanges exchanges are using Finerac because you can have. Uh, an account, if you are using, if you are logging to an, an, a crypto exchange, uh, one of the first things that you're having uh, is that you will have an account with different uh, currencies. And, and exchanges 
when you have your money or your crypto in an exchange, you are not, those exchanges are not pointing directly to the blockchain. They are showing you a, a, a balance. And that balance can be, and it's being done easily on Finerac, can be replicated and done in Finerac. And, and then the, the, the blockchain transactions typically are, are handled offline by any, by any exchange or with different software, with different connections. But the, 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 the ability of, of using the, the accounts of Finerac allows, to, allows you to create an exchange platform um, that is easy to use. <clears throat> and of course, uh, uh, we are working with some exchanges and, and we have developed a order book that is uh, that can be used, integrated, and we have integrated that with Finerac. That, that order book, uh, it's, it's the core functionality of any crypto exchange, any exchange, uh, actually, that can be, the, the, that is now integrated with Finerac. And we have just the, the, the full capability for building an exchange using open source technologies, not only Finerac, but also another open source uh, module that is the, the order book. Investment banks. Investment banks are also using Finerac and account uh, uh, and savings and, and wallet uh, functionalities. An investment bank, again, you, you want your clients to have an account. You want your clients to reflect their assets in, in a way that can be used in Finerac for, can be used Finerac to, to reflect that, that functionality for investment banks. So which fintechs are using the loan management capability? Again, neo banks. Neo bank, of course, it, it gives you loans and, and they are using the loan management capabilities. The online lenders, online lenders are very, very keen to Finerac. They are using Finerac for, um, for the loan management capabilities they are they having. And they are very uh, successful. Many of those online lenders are growing very fast in the world and they are, they are using Finerac as their core banking, as the loan management um, loan management system. So, as I said before, the loan management system in Finerac it's very powerful. It's a, it's one of the best features that Finerac has, and allows uh, any online lender, any lender actually, to use it out of the box and with minimal configuration and with minimum customization. You can have uh, a system that if you, go in, if you go to buy it or if you want to pay a license, it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. DeFi, decentralized finance. <clears throat> the part of lending of the decentralized finance can be built on top of Finerac. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that some of them are using Finerac for that. I'm not aware of, but it can be. So if you are looking to build uh, a DeFi uh, system that it's working on top of, of, of a smart contract in any blockchain, but at the end of the day, you will need to have uh, a, a, a loan, a schedule, a repayment. You will need to refinance. You will need to do things that can be done easily within Finerac. KYC. Then before you move on, Javier, I know you touched yes. on some of the competitors, but can you give examples of some of the competitors you've been able to help, you know, displace like in both the uh, account management or loan management capabilities and in your interactions? Is there anything, you know, feature wise or architecture wise from the competitors that Finerac could learn from to be an even more powerful fintech core banking applications? Yes, sure. <clears throat> In terms of functionalities on the loan management system, I think that the, the biggest chunk of the big chunk of of of, of, of uh, functionality that we are missing is the revolving loans. Revolving loans is something that we've been discussing, and there is a, a few uh, requirements already in place, and it's something that it's been asked 
for for a while. I know that some private vendors already have something, but having a revolving loan will be something that it's it's going to take us to the next level. Also, card capabilities, um, using the, the ability to, to manage and issue payment cards and credit cards. Uh, it's something that we can have in Finerac that will help us a lot and compete with the with the established vendors. Um, in terms of uh, architecture design, uh, I will I will be uh, so the, the discussion between microservices or I don't know if microservices is the is the is the way is the best way, but at least um, start moving out of the monolithic application and and start just creating things uh, in a way that can be uh, easily changed and easily interacted, in, integrated, and moving. And you don't need to deal with entire application each time you do something. That's it's 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 uh, it's another another layer that we can add. For, for improving the Finerac capabilities. But I think that uh, those are, are, are part of the improvement that we need to do and we need to see and we need to, to make for the community. But overall, the ability of, of you to jump into the code and change whatever you want to change, uh, it's, 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 it's one of the best things that we have and makes Finerac so appeal for fintechs uh, against the, the 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 vendors and the and the proprietary software vendors that we have in the world. Thanks, Xavier. No problem. <clears throat> so the KYC part of the Finerac platform also it's important and 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 we can have it like a, the module of the user module, but actually it, it can be expanded at KYC because you know your customer, you know your name, you have the name, the address, the, the information, you can put everything that you want. You can We can connect Finerac with all the, the, um, all, all the startups that are providing KYC services. Uh, you know that you can just, Take a selfie or a video and those and, and a picture of your ID, and these companies will process everything with uh, uh, machine learning, and they will give you back a complete report of if this person is, exists. It's a public. Uh, it's a, it, it is an, in any list, whatever. So, the connecting with those lists, connecting with those services, it's something that we we can also improve. And go and and have those connectors ready. We maybe can interact and and talk with these companies so they can develop those connectors and make them available for for the community. It's something that that uh, it's a discussion that it's way it's it's something that it's it's good to have. And and I think that many of those companies will be glad to uh, contribute connectors. Uh, of their services to our platform. So all of the fintechs and, and financial institutions that are using Finerac around the world can take advantage and, and, and seamlessly use their, their systems. So building a, a, a marketplace around Finerac is also something that we can leverage and, and we can take the, the, the advantage and the opportunity. So uh, I don't have the thank you page here, but I'd like to finish with this um, message of your focus uh, determines your reality. So what you are looking, what you're focusing and what you're seeing is what is the reality that you will be built and you will live on. So um, thank you. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions from the audience. I'm happy to start a discussion and or talk with you. Ed. Yeah, no, thank you, Javier. And like I had one, you know, follow up on that quote you posted there. And I know you mentioned this earlier, how 
you know, the breadth of use cases and that area of focus and the way in which Interact has been adopted has continued to grow organically over time. So that reality is becoming bigger and bigger as that area of focus grows. But how, you know, do you think, like with that growing focus, the community can, you know, prioritize and at sometimes, you know, with limited efforts, be able to know where to go and which direction? Like, how do you think the community can achieve that? focus and prioritization so so <clears throat> i think that our focus should be now understanding that fintech it's a core application for fintechs so as we started and, and the main focus was microfinance institutions and the base of the pyramid and the financial inclusion but now uh there's a new actor that wasn't there when when this movement start and this act, this new actor is are, is the fintech, are the fintechs, and fintechs are solving uh, a variety of problems. So being able, so I, I think that what we need to focus is that making fintech more API driven, cloud native, uh, demonolitized, just unbundle the monolith of software. So maybe if you want to use only the reports you can use the reports if you want to use only the the accounts you can use the accounts so you don't need to take the entire implementation entire system to use only one part you just focus on a small architectural part i know that that's uh, that is a big um, it's a big change and and it will take time or or probably finrex cn will succeed uh, Whatever the two, I think that that that's the role. Uh, that's that's the direction that we need to move. Focusing now on financial accessibility, that it's a bigger market, it's a bigger uh, opportunity that financial inclusion, and because financial inclusion, it's already happening. Uh, it's been already solved. It, it, of course, we have a, a strong, uh, strong. Uh, <clears throat> core of, 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 of people that doesn't have access to the digital economy. And, and, and but those are going to be sold by the big platform banks. Um, so now that we have most of the people included, so what's next? So next is accessibility. So every, everybody's included. So let's give them better services. Let's give them the possibility to uh, interact and to, to transact with the world to have better ap applications, to have a core banking that allows the financial institutions and fintechs to connect with mobile phones, APIs, other financial institutions, money transfer, blockchain, you name it. So accessibility, as Robert Jacquet was telling before, for me is the, is the next step. Uh, everything, everybody's included. Okay, now let's improve the services that we have. And, and Javier, I know like the line sometimes, you know, is starting to get more blurry between a financial inclusion provider and a fintech. And there are a lot of inclusive fintech providers. From your experiences working with more of these inclusive fintechs, is their need and, you know, their use cases and the services they need different from a fintech? Or how do you, you know, how do you balance the interest of an inclusive fintech versus just a fintech in general? So, so <clears throat> Basically, a fintech is it's it's working on a on a on a thin vertical, so it's it's giving or either they they're serving payments or either they are giving um, uh, loans or working with uh, 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 investments or or just solving international remittances. So you don't if you're a fintech. You're probably uh, working on on uh, on a vertical of the financial system, so that that is why you need uh, to focus on specific system, a specific part of the platform, and you don't need the rest. That's why I think that um, making this the architecture less monolithical, it's it's the key for that. We lost you for a minute. Uh, Ed. Uh, 
Hello? Okay. I don't know if there is any other question from the audience. You can just put it on the chat. Okay, if not, um, thank you everybody. I believe that we have now the lunch break and next session will be at uh, 1710 with trends in the open source industry and impacting new fintech development. Thank you, everybody, and see you after the lunch break.